Hi, this is Rob Reynolds again with Reynolds Retouching. In my last video, I showed you how to photograph paintings. This time, I'm going to show you how to scan slides and negatives. Now, I've had this done twice at Print Labs, and both times they clipped the highlight and shadow detail. So I'm going to show you how to import files without clipping the information. So I'm using an Epson Perfection V600 photo, and you'll notice there are a few differences between this and your typical photo and document scanner. For example, like most photo document scanners, it has a cushion pressure plate to push down against the glass. But with a negative scanner, that's removable, and then we have this window for scanning transparencies. So once you've selected a negative, it's time to look at the glass and make sure that it's clean enough for a scan. This will save you a good amount of time in Photoshop. You'll want some Windex and you'll want to clean that. Now your scanner is going to come with negative trays uh, and also slotted trays and you might have a medium format one in there too. Um, so take your negative and uh, we're going to put it in emulsion side down. Now the emulsion is the dull side and the side that the film tends to curl towards. So we're going to lay that in there and just uh, snap it into place. Careful not to touch the negative. You, you don't want to be photoshopping fingerprints. And uh, now we're going to want to hit it with some canned air. It's hard to get it all, and uh, static electricity certainly plays a role. And uh, give the uh, give the scanner a nice hit with that too. So we've placed our negative, and now we'll lower the lid. So now that we have our negative loaded, uh, we're on the computer now and you're going to want to pull up your Epson scan software and you can see that we have several different modes. We have office mode, we have professional mode, home mode, uh, auto. We're going to use professional. Um, we've loaded film and if you were doing a slide you would pick a positive film or black and white negative even though you can scan those as color too. Uh, but color negative and I've actually switched out the negative with a medium format negative, uh, one that I've been meaning to scan. And uh, we're going to need to get a preview. So once you've selected all that, you can uh, hit preview. And it's going to pull up the uh, negative. And as you can see, it's defaulted to this thumbnail layout. Uh, and it thinks we scanned 35 millimeter. So we're going to have to change that to normal. And I also like to see the film base here because it's going to help us when we adjust our levels later on. So we have our preview and now with the marquee tool we're going to select our negative and get a little bit of the film base there and uh, release it. So now it, it pops the contrast when you do that. And um, the, the main rule of scanning is you want to scan flat, meaning low contrast. You don't want to clip your highlights or negatives, meaning uh, bringing them into Photoshop or whatever program you're using without all of the information. So what we're going to do is go to levels over here. And here's your histogram. <clears throat> so if we left this on the default setting, it would clip your shadows from here down and your highlights from here up. And we don't want to do that because all of that is information in the clouds. There's probably detail there. And uh, maybe down under in the uh, undercarriage of the uh, four-wheeler. Um, and this little spike here is our film base that we've left around the edges. So what we can do is slide the shadow detail over and we're going to stop it right before the film base and we're going to move the highlight detail until we uh, come to the edge of that hump there. And you can see it's flattened to the whole negative 
which is good. That's what we want. Um, we'll, we'll address that issue in Photoshop afterwards. Uh, but the main point is that we're bringing in all of the information. So once you've done that, you can hit close. And next we're going to tell the scanner what, uh, what resolution to bring this in, in as, and also the target size. So your settings here are what will influence your time spent scanning and also the file size. Now, what a large file was in 2006 or, or earlier uh, isn't necessarily a large file anymore. And we're dealing with, in some cases, 16, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, several terabytes of storage space. So our file is probably going to end up around 100 megabytes and we're going to downsize that in Photoshop to the size that we need it. So that will give you the best possible scan. What I'm going to do is go to target size, change that to 10 inches. Of course, you can make it whatever you want, uh, but this is going to be a large file. Uh, 10 inches at will make it 600 DPI. So this is going to be a massive file, and it's probably going to take about five minutes to scan. Uh, I won't make you watch all that, but let's go ahead and scan it. And uh, save it as a TIFF. You don't want to do JPEG because we're going to make adjustments to this afterwards and we don't want to make uh, destructive edits and then have to resave and it's never good to resave a JPEG. So we're going to bring it in as a TIFF and uh, call it whatever you want to call it. In this case, I'm just going to save it as image three and uh, you can tell it where you want it to save. I'm going to leave it at pictures and uh, hit OK. So here's our file and we were pretty close in estimated 100 megs. It's 92.5. Um, I'm noticing a few things. Uh, one, there's dust, even after all that Windex we used. And um, it has a great tonal range, so that's good. Uh, I don't see any clipped highlights up here. Of course, you know, I'm just eyeballing that, but I don't think there are, or shadows. Um, so we're gonna have to spot tone. And it's blue, so we're gonna have to fix that. The first thing we're gonna do is pull up levels. So go to adjustment layers, add a uh, level layer, and gives you a little histogram here. We're going to do it channel by channel. So reds, see the film base always comes in first and that's a good sign because we didn't clip our shadows. So adjust it until the first black pixels appear. And do the same for green. Remember that first spike is our film base. And now we see the pixels. And we're going to do blue. So we're doing the separate channels to give us a true black. You can notice how the color changed. It's a little less blue. Um, and we, when we do the highlights, we're going to do red, green, and blue. So I'm not going to do separate channels because I know that in the clouds there's a color cast and I don't want to change that. So we're going to slide this over until we see the first pixel, pixels in the sky. There we are. And another problem is that the image is flipped. So we're going to go to image, image rotation, flip canvas horizontally, and that is correct. Uh, if you're ever in doubt, just look at the negative and the numbers on there and uh, you'll know which way it should be if you don't remember. And now we're going to take care of this blue. We're going to make another uh, layer of um, adjustment layer for color balance and shift that, shift that over to yellow. I like to do it for both the shadows, midtones, and highlights. But we don't want to do too much yellow. I 
I've also added some magenta. So now uh, we're going to take care of these spots and also crop crop out this film base. Um, so first, let's let's give it a crop. And image crop. There we are. And we're going to duplicate the background with Apple J. And this way, if we make any mistakes, we always have the underlying layer. Um, but take out your clone tool. You can also use the healing brush, whatever you prefer. And still, look at all that uh, dust that's there. So we're gonna we're gonna clone that out. And uh, some scanners also have digital ice. Um, it, it takes care of some of this when you scan, but. I haven't had too much luck with it, uh, and I still do it this way, but um, that's all going to have to be uh, cloned out. And if you don't feel like doing it, hop on my website and uh, go to the Ask Me portion, and it'll send me an email. If you want to mail me your uh, negatives, I will retouch them and send you back the file. And another tool that comes in handy for retouching is this patch tool. For longer pieces of dust, we'll just go around that, drag it over, and it's gone. So, it's pretty easy. Alright, so here's our file with most of the dust removed. And uh, I've changed the color balance a little bit, made it, made it more reddish-yellow. And uh, I've added a curves layer brighten it up a little bit. Um, so the last thing we'll do is flatten it and then after that you can sharpen it. I suggest saving it before you flatten it. Um, <clears throat> but we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've flattened the image and I've also downsized it to 6 inches at 300 dpi which is the size that I want it. You'll notice it's about 9.2 megs, uh, so it's, it's not a very big file. And um, <clears throat> I'll show you the difference between this and one that I actually brought in through the scanner at 6 inches at 300 without downsizing in Photoshop. And you'll notice the difference in noise. So we'll just Zoom in there. Zoom in one more time. And see how much uh, how much noise we have over here. That, that's all uh, different colored pixels in with the solid color there. Uh, we don't really see that over here. I can even go up into the sky and that's you'll notice it even more over in the sky. Um, so we're seeing a lot more noise in the sky there too. So that's why we want to scan high resolution and then downsize it to the resolution that you want it. Well that's all I have for you today. Uh, we talked about preparing your negatives with, with canned air and uh, the scanner glass with Windex. We talked about adjusting levels in the scanner software to avoid clipping the highlights or the shadow detail. And we talked about scanning larger and then de downsizing in Photoshop. Uh, if you don't have a scanner or you don't want to go through this process, um, feel free to go to ReynoldsRetouching.com. Just go to the Ask tab and send me a message and I'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, I do scan in negatives and send out the digital files. So. Um, once again, thanks, thanks again, and uh, I hope you were able to take something from this, and I hope you improve the quality of your scans. Thanks again.